to give us today's welcome uh, and a vision for Scotland, it's my great pleasure to introduce the co-founder of the Violence Reduction Unit and now CEO for Community Justice Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Karen McCluskey. I have real imposter syndrome. I've just, um, Tina just texted me and she said, you better be brilliant. <laughs> I'm passionate about this. And for those that have met me before, you will know I talk about babies and kids all the time. I'm an ex-nurse and I just think it's the most important thing that we do in Scotland. So Nadine, welcome. This is a culmination of years of work by so many people in Scotland. And it is a proper movement. People talk about movements all the time. This is a proper movement. I have been all over Scotland. I've been in Orkney. I've been in Shetland. I've been all over. They talk about this. They have seen that film more than once. And its effects are tangible because you can actually feel it. I go into schools and you can feel the trauma informed. It feels calmer. People talk about their kids differently and the teachers operate differently. You can feel it in our nurseries, you can feel it in our justice world, and that's where I inhabit, and in our police service. It's absolutely the foundation of the new justice world, um, and our justice strategy, all our Scottish Government policies. And I even hear our Chief Constable, our Head of the Police in Scotland, Ian Livingston, standing in front of cops, talking about adverse childhood experiences and trauma and how we need to be better. Who knew? And we've got quite a history in Scotland. We're a nation of inventors, and we've made stuff happen. And I was looking at this last night because I suddenly thought I didn't actually realise so much had been invented in Scotland. We invented bikes. T chicken tikka masala. <laughs> Chloroform. Courtesy of Sir James Y. Simpson. Colour photography. Criminal fingerprinting. Decimal fractions, which has the same impact as chloroform. <laughs> Deep fried Mars bars, yes that is a thing and they are bloody lovely. <laughs> Gallows humour, hypodermic syringes, sometimes not quite so good. Microwave, penicillin, porridge, radar, raincoats, television and TV. We've done not bad. But perhaps our greatest foundations was actually if you go back to the Enlightenment and I know Harry Burns and I talk about this all the time and Hume and Smith, way back in 1756, were around and they were philosophers that talked about the Enlightenment. And Adam Smith wrote of moral sentiment way back in 1756. And he said, and I was looking at this again last night, and he said, No society can surely be flourishing and happy, of which the greater part of the members are poor and miserable. To feel much for others is human nature. And I thought, oh wow had we only just learnt that history and kept on practising it. There's only five million of us in Scotland, and I know there's people from other areas here, but come to Scotland. <laughs> we remain, despite all our faults, and we have many, connected, and can I tell you, I absolutely think we can change things. People say, why do you do the things you do? And I think, because the view will be worth the climb. This is going to be hard, but the view will be worth the climb. But he also said something, Adam Smith, that tickled me. And I'd never read it before, and maybe Harry knows this better than me. He reads much more. He said, on the road from the city of scepticism, I had to pass through the city of ambiguity. You know that? That will never work. The city of scepticism to... Are you sure about that? And I've had loads of that. When John Carnick and I set up the Violence Reduction Unit, way back in 2004, and we tackled violence as a public health issue, that's a whole other lecture. And we started talking about early years, keeping kids in school, talking about zero exclusion, and even talking about love. And we were in the police. People raised their eyebrows. Some scorned, and some told us to get back to jailing people. But we tried that. And when I speak to so many people in jail who are both damaged and damaging, all their narratives start with, see when I was five, see when I was seven, see when I was eleven. You'd like to otherize them. Television and, and radio and some of the papers would like to otherize them as well. They are the very kids that we all failed. 
and they end up. And sometimes some people need to be there, but for so many, we've just failed them. So we joined, because we had no other big ideas, we decided we'd join the World Health Organization, the Violence Prevention Alliance, because we needed more clever ideas and we didn't have many ourselves. And we decided we'd hold a worldwide violence prevention conference and we'd invite everybody, because the one thing the police are really good at is organizing stuff. And we had people, experts, who came from all over the world. And we held it at the police college 20 miles from here, Tully Allen. And you know who we had there in 2007? We had Vincent Felitti, who wrote the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. Now, I'd like to tell you that I understood all his algorithms and exactly what he said, and I didn't really, but other people did. <laughs> but can I tell you, we were ahead of the curve. Not actually me, because I didn't really know, but there were some people in the Violence Prevention Alliance who said, you need to have this man. He understands this. 2007. This journey has been really long. But we are surrounded, and I really believe this, by some fabulous people. If I had to make a list of my perfect dinner party, you'd have to hold it in some place like Hamden. And can I tell you, you're going to change this country. And I'm telling you, it's going to be slow, it will. It's going to be frustrating, and it's going to be challenging. But our kids and our country depends on this. I got to listen to another famous American at the end of last year, and I could go on about this forever, so please taser me off. Barack Obama came to Edinburgh last year, so my current husband, because um, I think Barack Obama <laughs> should be my next one. I could wax lyrical about this. Anyway, he was pretty fabulous. I did try and get close, but a friend had said to me, don't get too close, Karen. The Secret Service will shoot you. <laughs> but anyway, he talked. He talked about lots of things, but he, um, he quoted Martin Luther King. It's not actually Martin Luther King. It's another abolitionist. And you'll have heard this phrase, and he said at the end of his thing, he said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And I thought, no, it doesn't. I completely fundamentally disagree with you, but I couldn't get close enough to tell him that. <laughs> because what I see right now is otherization, them and us. I see the rise of the far right. I see fake news, and I see some really bad things happening. Things don't bend towards justice naturally. You need to bend it. You need to advocate for our kids and you need to make it better and not worse. When I was asked to take over community justice after having done, I want you to say, having done violence for 14 years, <laughs> violence prevention for 14 years, I said, I'm not going to call it community justice, I'm going to call it smarter justice. I'm going to do the things that are evidence-based, do the things that work. I work with so many damaged people victims and witnesses, and in truth, the flow of people towards me in justice has to be staunched much earlier. That's about you. I think people will, in ten years' time, hold Scotland up and say, look what they did, and I'm going to be so proud. They changed things. They made it better for our kids and our adults, who had all the adverse childhood experiences you wouldn't want. But it's a long journey, and people are sometimes easily distracted Concentrating on things that are easy to achieve, you know that take less effort. I'm saying that's really hard, but we might do this. You cannot let that happen. Obama had said something, as you can tell, I really like him. <laughs> it's not really virgin and stalking. It's not. But a long while ago, he talked about something that's always, I've always used it. He talked about the smallness of our politics with a small p. He said, What happens is you get someone who comes up with a big idea, something about how to change a country. And then what you get is all the interest groups and the partisans who kick it around like a football until you lose the solution in the process. You cannot let that happen. And particularly not around this. This is our enlightenment. It matters. And you're going to need to lead this going forward. And I don't care where you are in your organisations, you can lead. Somebody was talking to me earlier about a, a colleague who was a lawyer who's doing something different and saying, you know, that's not really what you should be doing. Sometimes you just can't ask for permission. You just need to apologise later. So, if you're going to lead this, you're going to need three things. I tell everybody this, whether I'm talking to most senior leaders in policing, if I'm talking to people on the street, but I'm talking to you. You're going to need humility. That doesn't mean that you're going to think less of yourself, it just means that you need to think more of others. 
You're going to need authenticity. You need to be a purveyor of hope. You need to see around the corner and instill in people that the hope of tomorrow is going to be better than today. That we will be better. And thirdly, you're going to need resilience. And you're going to need loads of that. I always say to people, the three most important words in leading change are resilience, resilience, resilience. I get the feeling there's a film by that name as well. So you've sort of stole my thunder. I know there's people in this room that can make it better. I do. I know there's people in this room who are brave enough to try something different or you wouldn't be here. I know the measure of a true leader is not about you. It doesn't make any difference that I'm a chief executive. The measure of a true leader is being able to reach down and under and pull those who are less able along with you. So I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine what the best country in the world would look like for our people. And then I want you to take a deep breath. And I want you to go forward relentlessly. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen McCluskey. Thank you, Karen.